What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some r slash am I the butthole. Yesterday, we did have a couple of member updates, and I might absolutely butcher these ones, so I do apologize. But I want to thank Osa Stalin, Georgia, and Nord Arts for joining us. Thank you so much for your love, support, and for everyone for spending 20 minutes or so out of your day with the channel and getting involved. If you do have a moment, click that like button, and let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now today we are covering some stories with updates because I love a little story with an update every once in a while. So we're going to be reading the original stories and then the updates afterwards. So if you have heard the stories, as always, please feel free to use the timestamps in the description and along the timeline below. So this first story comes from Ricky Stallion 60 Am I the asshole for not caring about the company image after my boss stole from me? The long post had to complete an internship for my degree. I decided to join a startup to learn. Instead, had to figure out everything on my own, zero guidance, and was a glorified salesman instead of learning. Since it was paid $150 a month, not that much to be honest, and opportunities were rare during COVID, I went along with it, even with ridiculous targets. I was the best performer, and I could only get 10% of the target. For internship, I had to work on the social media all by myself and shoot ads on the days off using equipment I had begged from friends. Five months in, he told us at the end of the month that we weren't going to be paid and wouldn't be paid unless we were meeting his targets. I politely told him I would be leaving and pointed out that I wouldn't even be able to go meet clients without gas money. 25% of my pay was used for gas. He got upset at that and started talking about how he paid for my salary and took us out for drinks every month. He would pay for the food, we had to buy our own drinks and how his grandpa was dying and he needed me. I was leaving him when things were bad was in it only for the money. The other employees left within the next month. I dropped off a hard disk containing all my files to his sister, worth about $40, significant to a college student. Three months passed by as I was busy with my report. When I asked for it, he claims not to have it. He cut the call and his sister called me half an hour later, swearing she doesn't remember me dropping off anything. I was always dropping off stuff. He told me that I had sent the files to him over mail, which was a lie because there's a text conversation where he asked me to drop off the files at home. He then talked about how even if I had given, it was my responsibility to have come back and taken it back and started going off about how little my work meant anyways and not worth a penny of his time. Unfortunately, apart from screenshot, I didn't have any proof that I ever gave a hard disk. I told a few of my friends who started commenting on the company's Instagram, asking him to return it, that he was a bad boss and calling the product terrible. Many of them had actually bought it for my sake. It was a very small Instagram page, barely 200 followers, so any comments stick out. And now he's calling me, demanding me to take down the comments as it's hurting the company's image and that I didn't care anything about the company. And I just used him. He's also threatening to take legal action for slander. Am I the arsehole for not caring about the image? And should I tell my friends to back off? Now, one of the things that jumped out to me instantly is when your boss turned around and said, you're only in it for the money. And it's like, well, no shit, <laughs> right? But he was telling you that you wouldn't be paid at the end of the month. He was having to pay your personal money for gas money. And then he was stealing your personal belongings. I don't blame you for what you did. I am wondering what the actual product may be because it, it sounds like it's going to be a, a pretty toxic product. So we're going to go straight to the comments to see if we can find any additional information. And Redditor says, not the arsehole. I get your frustration that it seems like a bad company. Just one question because I'm a little confused. Did his sister work for the company? To which OP replied, no, she didn't. The company was run out of his house with the ground floor acting as the office. I gave it to her because he wasn't home at the time. Sorry for the confusion. And Sourdough says, not the asshole. If you don't want bad reviews, don't have shitty management that treats employees bad. And OP replies again saying this, I could go into this so much where every little thing had to be begged for from everything from days off, not even extra days, just to recover from working on the weekend to being compensated for office work, such as Ubers to promotional drives, business cards, hell, even for basic stationery like printouts. I'm guessing he enjoyed the feeling of power. And Colin McGrove says, okay, so your boss steals your personal belongings, tells you you will not be paid and then tries to guilt you into working for free. No, you're not required to care about the company's image. In fact, feel free to throw on their information about how he's trying to get you to work for free if you would like. 
not the arsehole. Also, you mentioned that at the end of the month, he said he wouldn't pay you for your work. Does that mean he is refusing to pay you for the time you already worked? Because that is literal wage theft and you should report it as such. And we'll have one more from Evil Nala saying, not the arsehole. Don't feel bad about the bad reviews, especially if they're truthful. This sounds like some MLM garbage to me, to be honest. Like, were you by chance selling crappy knife sets? Also, he probably has a heck of a lot of illegal employment practices for you to report, if you're interested. If he was dictating hours, he was functioning as an employer. That means either a W-2 and minimum wage or an accredited internship that you can get academic credit for. If you've got credit, definitely report all this trash to the school internship program slash supervisors. They should not continue a relationship that is this abusive to students. Alternatively, if you're an independent contractor, then he was overstepping his authority by dictating working hours and sales targets. Either way, a few calls to the school issuing credits and or State Department of Labor will likely give him too much trouble to bother with you. Sorry if this feels off topic. In my opinion, the probable abusive nature of the situation makes it automatically that OP is not the arsehole. And there was another reply from OP before we go into the update which said, Thank you for the detailed reply. Lol, it wasn't actually an MLM scheme, but at times it felt pretty close to it. We were selling a lifelong instant drink. Problem was, there weren't really any selling points for it, apart from claims that it was healthy and would boost your immunity, trying to tap into the COVID panic. I'm actually looking into whether I could report him for the shady packaging practice he was doing by labeling the date of manufacturing incorrectly so he could keep it on the shelves longer. Ooh dear, I've got an academic credit for it. All this happened after I managed to get my certification from him and let my professor know what happened. Didn't mention my friends trashing the Instagram, of course. Thank you for your kind words. It really did feel like an abusive relationship. After I quit, I spent a month in bed just trying to recover. I still have a problem talking to new people and I used to be a huge extrovert before this and love social gatherings. Never imagined an internship would put me through so much. Lol. I'm sorry about the dramatic lol at the end there, but I was just like, wow. You know, you're kind of taking a step back and you think about, you know, this is so bad for OP's mental health as well and the way it's affected them. And they said they used to be an extrovert and now, you know, that they, they struggle to talk to people. That's absolutely crazy. And I'm sorry that OP has to go through that. And hopefully the update is going to work in OP's favor a little more. So let's move over there to see what that says. So here is the update. I'm so very grateful to all of your responses. I really did feel bad, not about the hard disk, but about him saying all the work I poured into the company was worthless. All you made me genuinely feel better, and I'm very grateful to everyone who took a moment to respond. After my friends had posted, I got a message from the sister the next day, who said I was being inappropriate and it showed a lot about my character. I thought this was rich coming from a person who was either A, willing to lie to my face just to save her brother's ego, or B, was so very inept that she didn't even remember me giving her the only ever thing ever really had to resist the urge to respond since my lawyer friend warned me they might be collecting evidence against me. Later that night at around 10 p.m., my dad got a call from my ex-boss, threatening me with legal action. My dad, God bless him, didn't even know who he was and told him he shouldn't be disturbing people at night and cut the phone. <laughs> Only afterwards when my mum asked who it was, did she inform him that it was my ex-boss, to which he just shrugged and went back to scrolling memes. Got a mild chuckle out of that. My mother asked me about it and I let her know what he had done. She ended up calling him and my ex-boss ended up pleading with her to stop the Insta reviews and even offered to come over and talk to me. She pointed out about the hurtful comments on my work and the unpaid salary, then cut him off and said she'll see what she can do. She sat me down and told me that I could choose to bear a grudge or forgive him, that it was my place to decide, but she felt it was pointless of me to carry on since his company seemed doomed anyway. I guess at this point, I'd had enough as well and decided to cut him slack, asking my friends to knock it off, thanking them for their support. I didn't ask them to delete comments. My ex-boss could do that himself. Afterwards, the VC who was investing in the startup apparently got to know about this incident and scolded my boss and even offered to compensate me for the hard disk. He knew about my work for the company pretty well and was skeptical about the ex-boss's description of the event. I'm fairly satisfied with how things have turned out and even more about the hard disk. I'm satisfied about having gotten some sense of closure. For a month after leaving the job, I hadn't really slept well and I found it difficult to talk to new people, which was odd for me since I was a complete extrovert before that. I'm hoping to get better with time and I'll be back to my own self soon. Once again, thanks for all your love. 
And I'm in two minds about this one. I'm very glad that OP's got the closure that they wanted and they got some compensation for their hard disk. But the fact that they didn't get their pay in the end, it, it, it does make me very, very cross because surely that's illegal in a lot of places, but I don't know. However, I'm very, very glad that they did get their closure and we'll move on to the next story. And as I said previously, all these stories are coming with an update and this one's from a throwaway account called Am I the Asshole for kicking out my mother-in-law in the middle of the night? Some background, I 32 male and my wife 25 female have been together for five years and married for three and are expecting our son right now. We have our ups and downs when we first got together because I was fresh out of an abusive relationship and I was her first boyfriend, but I had always noticed that she was really demeaning about herself and she was always really disappointed in herself. And this was just six months into our relationship and it hurt to see her like that since she is an amazing woman. I convinced her to go to therapy and, and to her, we would do couples therapy because I really did love her in the short amount of time. And during therapy, I learned that her parents were narcissists who only loved her brother, their golden child. And when she relayed the abuse she faced, I honestly cried. That whole experience made us the strong couple we are today and the strong woman she is today. Back to the present. My mother-in-law and father-in-law have gotten a little better over the years, which is why we are at low contact from our no contact position. My mother-in-law came to visit us. They live overseas. Since my wife is pregnant and it has only been a week and my wife's mood is completely dimmed. This happened at night when we were sleeping. My wife went to get some juice and she was craving it while I went to the washroom and came back to see the glass on the floor and my mother-in-law shouting at my wife. I couldn't handle my anger and shouted at her to get out and told her if she didn't, I was gonna call the police. So she begrudgingly got out the house. I calmed my wife down and she told me mother-in-law had gotten mad at her because she wanted to drink apple juice because it's bad for the baby and how she doesn't deserve to have a baby if she wanted to kill it. I'm now getting calls from her family saying I'm an arsehole because I kicked her out and even got a call from my parents saying it was an arsehole move and I could have just let her stay the night and I understand I might be the arsehole because I kicked her out of the house in the middle of the night but at that moment looking at my wife shaking it was the best option. So Reddit, am I the arsehole? In an edit two was saying, for the people asking me about what kind of apple juice my wife was drinking in the messages, she was drinking natural apple juice, which she makes herself from fresh apples, not the one from the market. And we're gonna start with Misfit Incarnate saying, so much not the arsehole, go back to no contact unless you want this kind of behavior around your baby. And Mountain Goat says, not the arsehole, your in-laws are toxic people. I'm proud of you for protecting your wife from their garbage. They don't deserve a place in your family's life. And Skelly Ghosty says, not the arse. It sounds like your mother-in-law really only came over to control your wife and what she does during her pregnancy. If she didn't want to get kicked out, she should have acted like, oh, I don't know, a respectable human being. OP, you and your wife get zero out of five buttholes and your mother-in-law gets four out of five buttholes. And Blank Check says, not the arsehole. Who says that to a pregnant woman over juice? She's lucky you didn't tell her to go F herself. <laughs> An individual ad says, not the arsehole, you're protecting your wife. That's why there are hotels. For family who should be taken in teeny tiny bits of time. Now we're gonna move on to the update to see what that says. So here is the update. Thank you to everyone who responded to my post. Thank you to everyone who voted not the arsehole because I was really conflicted for a few days after the incident. And I also agree that I could have controlled my anger better. A lot has happened since I posted. Me and my wife went to therapy where she told me the reason she accepted her mother's request to come because she saw how her mum treated her brother's kids. So she wanted that for our son too. And she really did believe that her mother had changed for the better. But as explained by our therapist, that some narcissist refused to change. My wife and I have written one letter and sent it to every one of her family members who had told us we were in the wrong, which basically said that her mother never cared for her and never would and didn't want that around our children. And my wife wrote about several instances where she was subjected to emotional abuse and even though everyone knew, no one did anything except for her grandma, her father's mother. She said she is tired of always being the bigger one, but now she would be selfish for herself and our children. And if anyone disagrees, they're welcome to cut contact as she wouldn't miss people like that in her life. Something which shocked both of us was when her father called and asked what happened and she narrated everything. Her father being the typical narcissist tried to gaslight, but with my support and her therapy, she put her foot down and asked her father if he ever cared about her because it never felt like they did. She narrated every instance from their childhood to adulthood where she was subjected to emotional abuse and how her brother always came before her. 
Her dad was silent throughout the call and in the end, all my wife said that for her currently, she doesn't have parents and hung up. By the end, all my wife did was cry and I cried with her. I also called my parents asking how they could not take my side, knowing the history because they really love my wife, which is why it was hard listening. I'm in the wrong and they told me it was because her mother had called them in hysterics and I told I was physical with her. I was not. After learning the truth from me, they came over to apologize and my mother held my wife. I'm a single child, so I and my wife are everything to them. I'd like to point out in the metropolitan area and there are plenty of hotels, so I wasn't worried about my mother-in-law finding a hotel. She's loaded, money isn't an issue. For now, we're just waiting for the little one to be born and my wife is much happier and free from her toxic family. And it's one of these ones that it's very sad that, you know, OP and wife pretty much lost that side of the family to them, but it was the best thing to come out of this situation. It was a it was a tie that had to be cut. And I'm so happy that therapy and having someone great by their side has, has done this for them. And there's only positives coming from this from now on. That's the way I feel anyway. And I really hope so for the both of them and for their future children. But what are your thoughts on this one? Let me know in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And this next story comes from Throwaway Onion Kebab. Am I the asshole for me, 22 female, unplugging the internet when my boyfriend, 23 male, was playing a game? I cooked dinner for my boyfriend and I had called him several times. He didn't respond so I was like, what the hell, and went to find him and bring his dinner to him. He was playing Call of Duty or Halo and said he didn't hear me. I was like, all right, here's your dinner, and then I handed it to him and he just looked at it and said, I didn't want mac and cheese, I said chicken nuggets and fries. I said sorry, but if you had listened when I got back, you would have heard that the store was all out of nuggets. He then threw the plate with the food on it at a set of drawers. I said seriously, what is wrong with you? And he just said he was annoyed because I just made him die in the game by distracting him and he was already mad about having mac and cheese. I said if that's going to make you angry, you shouldn't be playing while eating. He just said whatever and carried on playing, so I went downstairs and turned the router off while I ate. He came storming down asking what the hell I had done. I said, if you can't listen to me, you shouldn't be playing games when I'm trying to do stuff. He said, I can't turn the internet off because he pays for it. So I said, he just wasted food. He said, I should have told him they were out of nuggets and waited for him to be done on the game instead of turning it off. I think he was being unreasonable, especially after he threw the plate, but his mum and my mum are siding with him. They say I shouldn't have turned the internet off and I'm thinking they are completely missing the point. So was I wrong to do that or should I have done something different? And we're gonna start with John Draper on this one saying everyone sucks here. Your son is being pretty immature and volatile, but as his mother, you're responsible for responding calmly and in a mature fashion so that he learns better behaviors. <laughs> And Jintra says, not the arsehole, leave, leave now. This is not going to get better. The fact that his mother and your mother are siding with him shows that he's been raised to believe that this is acceptable behavior. He's disrespectful and rude. He places his game playing above real life. He has anger issues. He eats like a toddler. If you stay and end up having children with him, you'll be struggling the whole time to get him away from the screen and help you. You will expose your children to him blowing up at them for interrupting his games. And Ali Katar says, dump him. He's throwing things, he's screaming, he's tattling on you to mummies. He's immature and he sounds utterly miserable to live with. I get him maybe being snappish for a second because he was focusing, but throwing things is never okay. It's a sign of someone that doesn't have their anger in check and frequently escalates into violence. A very soft everyone sucks here because you retaliated like that with a service that isn't yours. Don't provoke him, just dump him. And Jeepers Creeper says, everyone sucks here. You eat like five-year-olds, you fight like siblings, and then you run off and tell your respective mums. Grow up. And OP replies to this end, he told our mums first. They both messaged me and asked why I did it. So I tried to explain, and they were taking his side. And then Jeepers replies one more time to this end, to be fair, he has a lot more growing up than you do, which begs the question, are you bringing him up or is he bringing you down? And now we're gonna move on to the update to see what it says. And the update says, thank you to everyone that helped me see that what he did was really not right. I'd wondered why my mum and his would side with him too. After speaking with my mum, I found out he had been badmouthing me before this and I told her a different story to what really happened. 
He told her he had been at work all day and got home and I was instantly aggressive and turned the internet off and said no games or food. I don't know why she would believe that, but whatever. He'd been playing the game for eight hours straight that day up to that point. Anyways, I left him and moved back with my mum for now and I'm in the process of moving all my belongings, but I have the most important stuff. He has been texting me begging me to come back because he misses me, also because he can't cook. I saw McDonald's wrappers all over the floor when I went to get some of my clothes. He also posted a video to Facebook of his crying saying I took everything and I am a bitch. His mum is still siding with him and she has been harassing me in messages for abusing her son. She says how dare I leave him. First she tried to guilt trip me by saying how would he clean and cook by himself and when that didn't work she started threatening and sending abusive messages. I feel much better though. I didn't realize how much of a strain he had put upon me. So once again, thank you to everyone that helped me out. Gee whiz, that family seems unhinged. I mean, he's putting videos on Facebook of him crying and saying that you're being abusive to him. That's not, that's not normal. And then his mum is saying that, how's he gonna cook and clean for himself? Oh my word. Yeah, you're, you're so much better off out of that. Find someone that's good for you, <laughs> move on. And I wouldn't be going around that house by yourself at all because as I said, he just seems unhinged to me. But what do you guys think of today's collection of stories? Do you enjoy a story with an update? I love, I love a story with an update. It just gives you that conclusion at the end, doesn't it? Sometimes it's not always good, but it's nice to get it anyway. Let me know your thoughts on today's stories. And if you have a moment of your time, please consider hitting that like button as well as it truly helps out this channel. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you absolutely can, but never any pressure to do so by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description for Patreon and join up there. Thank you so much for your love, your time and your support. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Boxes are defeating. Purpose always fleeting. I poise questions to the ceiling like an answer gonna come. Truth is too revealing. Life is easier concealing. All emotions to the start on your heart going numb. I shouldn't be in drive more. I just wanna feel alive more. I feel hurt all the time, boy. I can't see straight. I've been